Hey human, Coach Nate here with another mindful focus to share with you today. In today's post, it reads as follows. Standing alone is better than being around people who don't value you. Now, we know human nature. It's natural to want to belong, um, to not be in isolation, to spend time in good company, to, to socialize. Uh, we have an innate desire, most humans, to, to fit in, um, to even feel a sense of community, natural and, and, and healthy. Spending the quality time with, with other, other, other people, it, it can do wonders for our mental health and, and well-being and in some respects in order to avoid isolation. Um, and what occurs when we cut off from, from everyone, it, it, is, it can be a form of self-care to socialize, to interact, to, to fellowship, to, to enjoy the company of, of other, other individuals. Just, just like food, it, uh, it, it, healthy food is necessary for our, our survival. It, food provides us with nutrients, it helps us grow. It, it gives us what we need and the body needs in terms of energy to sustain itself, to, to survive. Uh, we also know that some foods, um, whether they be spoiled, undercooked, foods we're allergic to, our bodies are allergic to, can be toxic to us, make us sick, and even be fatal. So not all foods are good. Not all foods that were once good are always good. Sometimes, what do we call it? Shelf life. Um, not all food is good all the time. If I had my way, I'd be eating ice cream every day for all of the meals. But that's not healthy. Like foods, the, the same is true for our mental health. Behaviors that are toxic, negative, that affect us, that we are sensitive or hypersensitive to, or have a adverse impact on us, not healthy. Those, relate, the, the, those behaviors generally stem from relationships, whether it be casual, platonic, superficial, or close. Um, close relationships. The degree of impact can be similar. How much we're, how, depending on how much we're relying on, how much those relationships mean to us, a toxic work relationship when we're relying on that as a source of income to sustain ourselves could be almost as deeply impacting negatively on us as a close relationship in a, a family, marriage, partner, a very close friendship. There's even some studies to suggest that a toxic boss has the same impact on an individual as their spouse. And so scary, scary territory. With this understanding, if we were to ask what is how to let go, live now, and win. Know that, embrace the truth that people may be well-meaning, but at the same time, toxic. That's something they own, whether it be through ignorance, not knowing any better, or intent, malicious. Doesn't matter, but know that it, that toxicity can be to your mental health like eating spoiled food. The truth of the matter is no relationship is better than a partial relationship that has toxicity. You can be at a point where you don't have food to eat, and if you don't have it for 
in a certain period of time, yes, it can lead to our demise. But I can almost guarantee you that if you eat that toxic, unhealthy food, that demise can come a whole lot quicker. And it can come before you have the opportunity where your healthy self might be able to find, survive long enough to find something healthy. Or put differently, maybe you go for long periods without food and you're able to sustain yourself. But if you eat just a little bit of toxic food here and a little bit there, over time, that's going to erode your immune system and your ability to sustain yourself, your body's ability to, to fight off, ward off disease, it, it just leads to a bad place. Better to allow the body's own natural resources to help it to survive and maintain and sustain than to introduce toxicity in, out of desperation. The costs are far too high. The risk is far too great. Another focus is to assess how you feel post interaction. After you've interacted with an individual or group, do you feel better? Do you feel up? Do you feel inspired? Are you glad for it? Good, healthy. That's, that's how it should be. If on the other hand, you feel worse, you feel less about yourself, you, you feel drained, you're second guessing, you're just, you're just uncomfortable. If, if your gut is, eh, something's not right, that's a warning sign, that's a flag, that's, that's, that's caution. Again, I'll use the food example. You eat some food, food hey, I feel good about it, I'm, I'm full, I feel, all's well. But we all know when we have eaten something and it gets an inside in our stomach and we're, oh, why did I? Wishing we wouldn't, and even going so far as to promise ourselves we'll never eat that again, especially if we knew before we digested it that it was going to result in this. So we know to do that with food, but why are we not utilizing, leveraging that same discernment to do judicious decision-making in our relationships. If I know that I'm going to feel worse for having hung around some people, I'm not going to put myself through that, engage, put myself out there, run the risk. I may have energy, well, I'll recover. What if I, I could have something? Of, no. Even if, even if I did, why would I waste it? Why would I spend my precious energy and time? Why would I spend minutes of my precious days on something that I know what the end result is going to be? So as you're looking at relationships, do you feel better or do you feel worse? Very simple. And for those that you're feeling worse, those are very clear indications. That's probably not something you want to have in your life for your mental health and well-being because again at over time it begins to wear on you in exercising this it's important to determine set and then maintain boundaries for your protection and these are firm boundaries not you know loosey-goosey or flexible or so much real solid boundaries like driving down the freeway and you got that concrete barrier when traffic's coming at you at 70, 80 miles an hour. Yeah, I'm not looking to have a piece of thread or a little bit of rope. I want to, I want to for my protection, because you never know what could occur, I want to make sure that there's a solid boundary there. And in doing so, even if it costs you the relationship, if you're establishing boundaries for your mental health and well-being, for your wellness, for what is good for you, causes such an issue with the other individual that they no longer want to have a relationship with you, that then translates into you, your values, and what is important to you is not something that they share. And 
that's not a relationship. That may be a transactionship. They may have something that you want. You may have something that they want. It's not a relationship because you, 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 in relationships where there's caring, compassion, you make sure that you're taking into account the well-being of the, you care enough about the other person that you respect them enough to know what is good for them in their lives and for their mental health and well-being. You don't want to ever negatively impact on them. So you're not really harming a relationship. You're addressing a interaction that's unhealthy for you. I can have a relationship with the stale moldy bread in my refrigerator as long as it's there. But your well-being is too high of a price tag to pay to maintain a relationship that is unhealthy for you. No room for compromise. And again, that's not being selfish. That's self-care. Selfish is me only. Self-care is me first. And know this truth. Mental health like physical health is irreplaceable. It is at times fragile. And it should always, always be your highest priority. Just sharing some insights with you. Feel free to try it. Toss it. Both of those could be correct answers. Which one is something only you can determine for yourself? If this resonates with you, feel free to give a like, cross, subscribe, follow. Hit the notification bell so you know when I post additional content like this. And share this with someone else who you know could benefit from it. And as always, remember to let go, live now, and win.